G'day guys, uh, g'day YouTubers, uh, this is uh, Steve James Barr and uh, right here we've got Mr Gash Slug, the famous YouTuber and uh, today we've got our review of an, an IPA, just to give you a bit of background for those uh, that, that haven't seen the other videos, um, I called into Gash's um, uh, Vaughan Live broadcast, I'll leave a link below, um, and uh, asked him because I've just started my all grain career and I asked him if he could just help me come up with something quick and easy for an IPA and he came he asked me what hops uh, what hops have you got to start with and so I, I said the hops that I had and he came up with a recipe and for him it was probably a very basic recipe but for me it was it was good to know because I knew it came from a good source. Thank you for that, Gash. And uh, my one is, and I asked him to brew it as well because I just wanted to do a taste comparison. You know, just, I don't know, because he made it up for me, I thought I'd just throw it out there and ask if he'd brew it as well. And he said, yeah, and he's, he's brewed it up as well. Uh, there are some slight differences. He used uh, American Two Row. Yeah, yeah Amer Bruce. American yeah. two row where I used Victory, uh, six kilograms we both used, yeah. and I used 0.6 or 600 uh, grams of uh, Shepherd's Delight, which is a, a basically a substitute for Cara Red. And I think, what did you use, Gash? I used, I used uh, a Simpsons, Simpsons um, I think it's a medium caramel, caramel which is, it's about, about the same level as a Cara Red or whatever, it's the same yeah. sort of. Yeah, and, um, and the hops were Warrior for bittering, uh, Nelson Savine for 10 minute boil and ca uh, Centennial at flame out and the, that's where we also differ slightly. Um, Gash used Mosaic, was it? Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I, I just, just had, had a bit of extra. When, when, I, when I heard, I heard that you changed the recipe a little bit, bit yeah. just because you had to, I had some mosaic, mosaic hanging around. I just threw in the, another 20 grams of mosaic at the end as well. Yeah. But essentially speaking, we've, we've got something similar. It's not going to be I, identical, but I mean, uh, we're both drinking IPAs. And uh, <laughs> cheers to that. Now, there's the colour of my one. Uh, my one's fairly, uh, it looks a lot darker on, uh, just I don't know whether you'll be able to see this or not. Oh, yeah, you can. This is lovely. That's I love that red colour, man. I'm going to use that next time. <laughs> yeah, it is actually a really nice colour. And mine's been in the keg three weeks, which will um, maybe mellow the hops a little bit more because yours is how old? Uh, only a week. It's actually, it's not even a week in the keg yet. Oh, okay. And did you force carbonate it or? Yeah, I did. Yeah. You did. Yeah. Good old force carbonation for the win. If you need a beer in a hurry, you force carbonate. I just, I just give it a little hand at the start. And yeah. Let, you know, that little hand at the start helps. <laughs> anyway, here's cheers and uh, let's see whether we can't yep here we go cheers and let's uh, get into it i uh, will see what's on the nose eh i, will... I am getting some hop uh, profile in there and as we were discussing before the video guys um warrior even though it's a bittering hop and nelson savine and centennial all share at least one characteristic which is uh, the grape fruitiness or the grape sort of freshly crushed grape sort of aroma and it's not like um, grapefruit itself it's just it, it's like the zest of it yeah, really, sure. really isn't it yeah it's it's a, a, there's a, a uh, and, uh, I'm getting a lot of uh, it's, a, it's sort of a mixture it's, it's not piney it's not full on citrusy it's sort of in the middle there, and it's, it's, it's really nice what I'm getting there. Yeah, well, uh, let's give it a kick in the nose. And um, uh, straight off the bat, even though it's, uh, like, to be honest, as I've discussed with Gash, um, I'm starting to become a hophead. 
and next time I do this, I'm going to dry dry hop the hell out of it. I'm going to do probably the same recipe, but I might even use the same grains that you use, Gash, because I've actually found that I can actually get the the American two-row and the, um, was it crystal? Yeah, well, well it, was it was a medium crystal. It was, a, it was a, about 40L, which I think, from, from memory anyway, which is about what um, Carrot is. Um, yeah. And I think it's a Simpsons medium from memory. I haven't got my recipe in front of me right now. Um, oh, I used yeah. a, a Simpsons medium just because it was the closest to, because I thought you were using Carrot Red, then it was yeah. the closest sort of numbers I could get to it. Right. And um, I think, did you, did, did you dry hop it? I did, I did, I did dry, dry hop. You did? I dry hopped with, For how many days? Uh, well, it was a little bit longer than I wanted to because I was, went on holidays. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was a choice. Do I wait till I get home and dry hop or do I, and then I wouldn't be ready for another week or so, or do I dry hop when I go away? And I was going away for five days or four days, five days, yeah. four not five days. Um, so I dry hopped before I left. And yeah, so it was, it was about five days, but then I crashed chilled for three days. So really, it was on the it was on the dry hop for probably a week, um, but three of those were was cold and. You know. Okay, so typically, how long do you, as a normal thing, how long do you, in an ideal situation, how long do you dry hop for? Well, I, I think uh, somewhere between like three days and five days. Is really? Enough. Yeah, I, I don't think you need much more than that, and it, unless you're one of those there's some recipes where you. You keep adding dry hops, like you get dry hop for three days, and you add more, and then you add more. Oh, God. But if you're not, just, uh, you know, there's people that say they get grassy flavours, and I think it depends on the type of hop you use. Yeah. The three or four days really usually is enough, and especially if you're going to crash chill, because, you know, you have that three or four days at uh, ferment temps, you know, maybe 20 degrees, depending yeah. on you know, what you're using, yep. and um, you crash chill it after that for another few days. So, you know, you're on there for nearly a week anyway. Right. Well, um, I have to say, uh, in, in criticism of myself, one error that I did make in this, which would have helped in the hot profile if I didn't make this mistake, was, and it was only because of the lack of knowledge that I did it, and it was that... I didn't do a hop rest at when I added my flame out addition. Oh, okay. I okay. basically added my flame out addition, turned the wart chiller on, and started chilling it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you you, you, you wouldn't have got quite as much. Yeah. But I'm guessing your, your wart chiller still probably took, you know. Uh, took about. To be honest, uh, I've actually spreaded the coils apart a little bit now. Because I think it'll be more efficient if you've got a tiny bit of space between each coil. Whereas when they were all jammed together, it's just basically working like one yep. unit. And yep. it's you not... Roots, spread them apart and, and still be in your beer, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's a better thing to do. Yeah, you? and uh, I think um, I think I would have got uh, a little bit more... I mean, don't get me wrong. If I gave this to, to someone who's used to store-bought bloody corn beer, you know, they're going to drink that and go, oh, what hops did you use? You know, <laughs> but for me, who's just starting to develop a hop palate, um, it's, I, I'm, I'm just finding I'm, I'm, I'm wanting a little bit more. Yeah. Well, well so I, I did, did, I must admit, I did, because I knew you weren't a hophead. Um uh, I've seen you have some beers, you know, it might have been a few months ago now, mm. but, and, and gone, wow, well, that's really hoppy. So, you know, I had that in mind. I went, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to overdo it, you know what I mean? It's just going to be a, a balanced, uh, okay, the, the hops are going to be there, but it's not going to be so bitter that your mouth goes like a cat's bum. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, and, 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 you know, it's not going to be over the top, and, and that's that, that was the sort of plan. Well, well, I'll tell you what, that being said, you, you've hit the mark. Exactly, because that's exactly what this is. It has got hops over and above a standard um, uh, store-bought general-purpose beer. 
Um, uh, but it's not so much that I couldn't give it to my mother. And, you know, like if I gave this to my mother who typically drinks shandies, she would not drink it and go, oh, oh, dear, that's that's got too much grapefruit to it. You know, yeah. she, she's going to go, oh, that's actually not too bad. And, and I think because you used Victory instead of a pale malt, yeah. uh, and you can tell by the colour, you've got a lot more um, malt backbone than I have. I kept it quite simple. Mm. Uh, and that's because why you I love hops. Hops. <laughs> because you don't need so much. You know, the simpler you keep the grain bill, um, the less hops you need to make it stand out. Like The heavier the grain bill, the more hops you need to, to yeah. punch with that, you know what I mean? Well, I, I have to say, um, you know, even though I've said oh, I needed more hops and things like that, you, you've done me a, a solid because you've delivered exactly what you um, were asked to deliver me, which was yeah. some kind of an IPA that I can brew, that I can digest and, and, and not be put off, you know, hops by. Yeah. A, and that's exactly what we've got. And um, it's good. It's yeah, good. Well, I'll, I'll step in there and say, like, if you do come and do this one, man, this is one of my... Oh, I admit it, and like I, I, you know, we come up with this recipe in under ten minutes, you know, five minutes or whatever it was. This is one of the best IPAs I've brewed, man. I, I'm really, really loving it. It's um, yes, I added that little bit of extra mosaic uh, at flame out, and I added a little bit in the, in the dry hop. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 fucking lovely. <laughs> yeah. Oh well, <laughs> you see, this is like very similar to two of the beers that keep winning. Um, the, the best beer of the year award here in Australia. Wow. The, uh, the Feral Hop Hog and the uh, Mash IPA, M M I P A, I think it's called Mash IPA. Oh yeah. Uh, and this is the closest I've ever got to it. Not that I was trying to. I mean, it just happens to be because it was you that had the hops, and uh, I just I did with you. Look at that for lacing, would you? Yeah, it's 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 unreal. It's really I mean. Nice. I mean Drinking it. <laughs> so. Have you ever had uh, a beer uh, called the, the brand is Max? Max. Yes, 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 I have had Max. Have yes. you had Max Hop Rocket? Oh, hang on. No, I, oh. it has a, it has a dark brown uh, label with silver writing. No, I haven't had that one. I've had a green one, and I've had a. I've, I've had two or three Max, but I haven't had a Hop Rocket. I should. I haven't <laughs> seen that. I, I tell you the up. honest to God truth, uh, Gash. This, and 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 if if you had tried it, you'd know it. That you wouldn't even have to think about it. You'd go, oh fucking oath, I've had that, you know. Because Hot Rocket is, it is a good beer to have if you're thinking about getting into utilising some hops and things, because it'll give you some idea of what can be achieved and, and it, it is what it says it's a hop rocket you know it fucking is right there but it's it's you know i've said it before and i'll say it again there is a major difference between adding a hop tea to an extract and doing all grain with hop additions yeah. You know, the hops seem to be a lot more palatable in an all grain than they do as a just a, a straight out hop tea thrown in an extract. And that's not to say there's anything wrong with any of you guys out there that do uh, do hop teas and extracts. But personally, in my experience, if I was going to do extracts again, I would probably only ever do a hop tea if I was going to dry hop it as well. Yeah, and yeah, and, and I'd never really, um, I I'd never really did hop teas in my extracts. I used to boil. Um, in the end, you know, it took me a few years. To, yeah. But the the major thing in the end, I used to boil about five uh, liters of water with about five hundred grams of whatever I was using at the time, some sort of either uh, light dry malt or, or liquid malt. Yeah. And I at least had a five liter boil, and I did my additions then. Um, and, and, you know, that, that's, that's better, better than a hop tea. tea. Yeah. Um, and, and some beers were really, really nice. Um, there's, there's actually, just recently I've been, um, there was a, a video I did uh, on the Hoppy Pale Ale, Hoppy Cooper's Pale Ale, and I got, a, you know, a lot of feedback from it, and everyone's been brewing it and really, really loving it. 
and I've just recently done a all grain version of it, and um, my mate didn't know like one of my all grain yeah. mates. Oh, and I gave him a bottle, and he sent me a message the other night going, "Wow, man, that beer is awesome!" Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, cool. That's the uh, that's the one, and, and I'll put that recipe. Um, and and I I have to say, you know things that people are not aware of there is a thing known as the hop twang right and that is the 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 sort of the spart bitterness you get out of a especially if it's over four percent or five percent if it's like five and a half to six percent you tend to get a hop twang well the thing i've that i personally think is a lot of that's to do with fermentation temperature control yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean the extract twang or the... The, uh, the extract yeah. twang, I should say. Yeah, the extract twang. You know, yeah, like... You're right. A lot of it's fermentation control and freshness. As long as you've you got nice fresh extract, which is hard to tell sometimes. Yeah. Uh, because the shop will... I don't, you know... Yeah, it's, tr- it's true, though. It's true. I look at it and go, oh, no, he's just an extract brewer. But you go, is this fresh? And I go, yeah, 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 it's fresh. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's only been there eight months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and uh, there's temperature control, temperature control, temperature control, temperature control. Temperature control. Look, to, to me, temperature, temperature control is more important than sanitation. Some, Some people have shit me down, down for saying that. that. Yeah, uh, but it is, man. It, 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 what, what the yeast does to your beer is more, just, just about more important than than, than anything else. Yeah, and uh, like. I'm so glad that I got my temperature controller and I've got it all working now and I, I've got it, it's only, a, it's not a dual phase, it's a single phase. Yeah. It, it does heating or cooling, but it doesn't do them in unison. Uh, yeah. So what I did in my infinite Kiwi wisdom was I, I turned around and I put a heat belt on it in the fermentation fridge yeah. So that will constantly be trying to raise the temperature, especially in an enclosure like a fridge. <laughs> oh, good on you, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then I've got the fermentation temperature controller set to 21. Uh, no, it's actually because it's, it's, it's got a, um, a koozie cut open uh, you know, a beer koozie cut open and taped over the probe on the side, the way you yep. guys do it. And I took a reading inside. I sterilised the end of another probe and I took a reading on the inside and there was about a degree and a half difference. Yeah, and, and there is. And that's, I mean, I, I was talking to someone, uh, it, was, it, was a, it was a thread on the Home Brew Network on Facebook, and so we were talking about temperature, temperature control and someone said, you know, they have their probe to control their fermentation temperature fridge in a jar of glycol, which is, you know, it doesn't matter. It could be a glass of water. Yeah. But, um, and that controls the, the temperature of their fermentation. And I'm saying, well, it doesn't because you, your fermenter is going to be a degree or two warmer at least. It is. Big once that yeast all excites up and... Exactly. It, it warms up, man, and you've yeah. really got to... If you can get it inside, there, there's a few ways of doing it. I'm really, I'm, I'll do a video on it soon. Yeah, that'd um, be good. Uh, of a way that I'm going to... Um, <coughs> excuse me, too. I'll cut that bit out. <laughs> yeah. No, but there is a way of... Um, you can just get a... Uh, I, I, I'll talk... So, yeah. There is a way you can do it. You can um, put a hole in your lid, another hole in your ferment- fermenter lid. Yep. And use a rubber. And you, if you can get one, you know the um, the beer spears from your kegs, the, the one that sucks the beer up from the bottom of the keg. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can close the end of one of those, like cut it off a little bit, close the end, and you can push it through. Uh, oh, through the- so to, to make like a, a one of those... Oh, like a well. Yes, exactly. That's what I was thinking of. And then you feed your, you know, your, your wire. Ah, yes, yes, like, yes. And, and it's actually taking the, the, the centre of, because that's where it's going to be warmest. Yeah. Sort of the... Um, yeah, but I mean, I, I basically think 
in my own way, I've kind of done the same thing by taking a temperature reading on the inside, having my temperature reading on the outside, seeing that it's a degree and a half different, and then putting my uh, fermenter uh, down a degree and a half. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and that's exactly what you can do too. You can know, um, I've just brewed a Belgian, yeah. and the yeast bits, are, which is actually in this glass here, <laughs> and, and you get really um, the different flavours from Belgian yeast come at a hotter temperature. And I had mine fridge set at 21, and I, I just had, I can tell by tasting that, because I've only just kegged it today, yeah. that uh, inside the actual fermenter was a couple of degrees hotter. Um, I can tell from the, this will be all right, but um, it would have been better if I had have done what you did and lowered the, you know, down to 18, and then I knew would have known the inside might have gone up to, you know, 20 or something yeah. at the most, and uh, I wouldn't be so fruity. But a lot of people like that in Belgian yeast. Exactly. I'm, not a, I'm not a huge fan of it. I use it. I don't know, I'm trying to make myself like Belgians. <laughs> <laughs> well, I... Yeah. I've yet to experience it, and, and I have to be honest. Just in uh, closing, because we, we'll we'll uh, get this video uh, uh, underway. Um, I've yet to brew. I, I brewed when I was brewing extracts. I brewed many substandard extracts that I still drank because I'm not going to chuck alcohol away. <laughs> but I have brewed f uh, four all grains and. My last one, just quietly, you're going to love it, mate. Oh, I, I, when I saw the recipe for your last... 407 uh, grams of hops. I just took a hydrometer reading this morning or this yeah. afternoon and had a wee taste of it, and it was like... Whoa, whoa. Uh, that's going to be a good beer, man. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. I saw that and just went, wow. And, went, <laughs> and then I felt inadequate after I thought you'd do this one, you know what I mean? Because I, I, I just kept it low a bit, you know? And then I took you to that and went, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I've had, um, this is my second uh, that has come to fruition in the keg that I've, the second keg I've tapped is this one, and my first one was my um, uh, my smash beer, and both of them are fucking awesome beers. In my opinion, I don't know if this is correct, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that, um, that, that all grain is a bit more forgiving than people think, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, I, well, yeah, yeah, I, I'll agree with you there. I, yeah, I yeah. mean, if you get a bad recipe, you're going to get a bad beer, aren't you? But, yeah. I mean, but it's the same with extract as well. What I was kind of meaning was, um, when I say forgiving, just to put it in perspective, is what I was meaning is, if you're a degree too low or a degree too high, you know, you may not break down all the sugars, the starches into sugars that, that are available. But I tell you what, that's where I've used dry yeast enzymes and it has broken them. I had one in the, the, the actual black IPA that I, that big mother of a beer, it sort of slowed down to an almost stopped at 1.022 three days ago. So I put a packet of dry yeast enzymes in there. It's now at one four. Wow, man! I know. I, I I think I told you on, on my cast, but um, yeah, I've never used dry yeast enzymes. But wow, that's that's uh, it's that's impressive. That's an impressive amount to drop in three days, isn't it? But you're right. It, it, you know, people stress about the temperatures, and yes, if you're trying to. Um, recreate a beer the same every time yeah then you know that's, that's when you think about trying to get the same temperatures yeah but if you're just brewing a beer and it's the first time it's a recipe you haven't done before and you're off by a degree or two it, do it doesn't yeah. matter it doesn't it doesn't as long as you're not over you know <laughs> as long as you're not up to in 82 degrees yeah I, I mean yeah as long as you're within the range yeah as long as you're in the range i mean like that smash beer for example i I didn't realise the the lid in my 
mash tun opens like that. It's got yep. a small half and a big half. Okay. And it opens like that. And yep. it's only about this thick from the the lip of the uh, mash tun to the top of the lid, and whereas yep. yours is about this thick. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I, I stuck a blanket over the top of it, yeah. but I should have stuck a quilt over it and wrapped it up good because it lost, to be honest, it lost about three and a half, four degrees. Oh, really? Yeah. And that's it. Well, I, you got a big one, though, haven't you? you got a big yeah, one. Yeah, well, that, that, that's the other thing. I did think about what you said about putting a uh, foam pad wrapped in glad wrap in there. Just, just sitting on the top of the uh, the grain bed, just so that it um, holds that head space is not really in the equation because you've got it's got a lot of uh, room to cool down in there. It makes it, 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 it does, does make a huge, huge difference. Your head space. Un- unless I'm people. doing a double batch. Yeah, I, I see a lot of yeah. That's right. I, I see a lot of advice given to just buy a ten gallon, which they call them over, you know. In America, buy a 10 gallon esky, but if, if you're not brewing huge beers, um, my I've got a 32 litre, which I don't know is probably six gallons or something. Um, for a normal batch, you don't need a huge esky, man. You, look, mine's about so, so I normally brew a 23 litre batch, yeah, and my, my esky is 32 litres, so it's a, it's a little bit bigger, it's, right. That gives it the uh, space for mash out and stuff that you sometimes do. But you don't need a huge esky. If you do have a huge esky, it means you can do bigger batches, but it also means that when you're not doing a huge batch, you're going to have a lot of headspace and you'll lose a lot of um, Exactly. Yeah. It's just something for me to be aware of. And uh, with that being said, my good friend... um, Stay on Skype and uh, we'll decide what to do with this video. Um, And anyway, to all you YouTubers out there, thank you very much for watching and uh, I bid you farewell till the next video. And uh, Gash. Thanks very much, Steve, because uh, that is one of the best beers that I've brewed in in a while and I'm really enjoying it. Awesome. (laughs) It's empty glass. (laughs) Yeah, same here, same here. I'm itching to go and get another one, so we're going to cut this video and uh, I'll... uh, For the recipes and to whoever's channel this is on and whoever's isn't on, both of our channels will be down the bottom. Okay. uh, Cheers. Cheers. Take it easy, man. Thank you very much. It's been awesome. Awesome.